Hello and welcome to another screencast. I'm glad you're taking the time to view this one. I'm Jose Rosa, science specialist at the Mason Pilot Elementary School in Roxbury. And if you're familiar with my screencast, then you'll know that I add some sort of puzzle or game or twist to them. This time, I'm adding a set of questions which will be included in my last screencast. Now, here's a clue. The questions will have to do with what's behind me. Back there. All right. So in this screencast, I'll be providing an overview of the measuring time science kit from STC, as well as go over the big picture of the unit. Now, I have mixed feelings about this unit. For starters, the unit is great with teaching students how to keep time with the sun and the moon. Students learn from direct observation of sun shadows and moon phases. In addition, the second half of the unit has students exploring different clocks. Students are exposed to scientific variables and explore how changing one variable at a time can lead to new scientific discoveries. So, what are variables? Well, variables are the parts of a scientific experiment that can be changed. As a rule, only one variable should be changed at a time. This variable that is changed is called the independent variable. All other variables, these that are not changed and remain the same throughout the experiment, are called the controlled variables. For more information on variables and other science ideas, you can go to sciencebuddies.org. Um, it's a great resource, especially if you're having a science fair and so on. So you can see here going to uh, sciencebuddies.org. You could do a search for variables or any other scientific content that you want to search for. And you can see it gives you a whole bunch of um, different links. And there the variables are defined for you and for students. So, what I'm, why do I have mixed feelings about this unit? Well, some of the lessons don't really cover grade 5 content standards. And while the lessons progressively build on each other, the fact that we are limited with time usually forces me to make difficult decisions and skip some of the lessons. Furthermore, the MCAT still has questions about the solar system, and this kit does not cover the solar system in detail. Please note the BPS Science Weebly page has sample MCAS questions. Here's how to get there. You can see they're organized by grade level and by unit. And each link has questions based on that particular unit, um, MCAS type questions based on that particular unit. An important note, by the way, is that this unit teaches students other skills and content and makes many interdisciplinary and cultural connections. Um, it is rich with cultural references um, and it is also rich with cross-disciplinary um, subjects as well. So regarding notebooks, it's somewhat difficult to use notebooks during this unit. The problem is that unlike FOSS, this unit does not have half-page student worksheets. If you saw my other screencasts, you know that I prefer to use a hybrid style notebook. Students paste half-size worksheets in the notebooks when needed, but they also write notes on the blank notebook pages. Although time consuming, I photocopy the student sheets at about 67%. This reduces the pages to a size where students can cut and paste them in their notebooks. Like I said, FOSS has the half-size um, uh, duplication masters. STC does not. Okay, so what are the big ideas of this unit? Well, the main ones are the moon phase cycle and how the sun's shadows can be used to keep track of time during the day. If I were to pick a secondary big picture, it would be conducting scientific experiments by focusing on one variable at a time. Now the kit has 16 lessons, and I will be creating five additional screencasts organized by common themes. Here's a summary for each screencast. Screencast number two will have lesson one, before clocks, 
Lesson 2, making a record of shadows. And Lesson 3, does the sun move? Screencast 3 will have Lesson 4, counting days, devising a calendar. Lesson 5, predictions, moon phases. And Lesson 6, observing moon phases. Screencast 4 will have lessons 7 through 9. They all focus on water clocks. Students explore different water clocks and they use different variables to control how long it takes for the clocks to sync. Screencast 5, lessons 10 through 12, they all focus on pendulums, which is important. Um, it's an important pre-lesson to the actual end of the lessons, which is lessons 13 through 16, which will be Screencast 6, where they all focus on clock escapements, which a pendulum is a big part of the clock escapement. Like I do during every overview screencast, I'm going to go over the student learning outcomes document or slow document. This document, which is found in the BPS Science Weebly page at bpsscience.weebly.com, summarizes the pacing of the unit and overarching themes. Let's take a look at how to obtain the slow document. Again, you go to bpsscience.weebly.com. The first link right beneath Welcome, Student Learning Outcomes, Pacing Guides. And then you scroll down to your particular grade level. So when you click on Grade 5, it will come up with this document that has all uh, units for Grade 5. Now here's the measuring time unit. As you can see, it takes from 7 to 9 sessions um, for sorry, three to four weeks from the first seven, for the first six investigations, and four to five weeks for the rest of the investigations. So you can pace yourself out uh, using this document. Now before wrapping up this screencast, I would like to emphasize the science and engineering practices that this unit covers. Of the eight practices, this unit touches on planning and carrying out investigations, analyzing and interpreting data, and constructing, sorry, constructing explanations. Okay, so I'll end the screencast here. Uh, make sure to watch my other screencasts, and remember, there are many more screencasts made by other BPS teachers uh, within the Boston Public School system. Until next time, keep smiling.